Hey, what's up guys? Man, what a bright, sunny morning. Uh, clear skies, temperature's nice. The sun is scalding hot though. I can already feel it burning my flesh. And uh, so hopefully today I can get what I need to get done on the outside finished and uh, get inside where it's nice. Anyhow, I'm standing here in front of this gorgeous piece of machinery, an old Black Betty blam -a lamb And uh, today, we're going to do a couple things. Uh, it's got one dash valve that's leaking really bad. This is for the uh, Duma Flicky, the thingamajig, the fifth wheel. And uh, so we're going to get this replaced. It was cheap. I had one in stock. And so we're going to get after it. And then, all right, so what we've got here is the uh, fifth wheel slide and this valve is shot and it's leaking back there and so we're going to get it taken down so we'll take this panel off the dash and uh it's this it's this valve down in here and um so we'll have to take a couple lines off and then take this thing off the dash and we'll put the new fittings back on um it's going to be difficult for you to see but we're going to uh do our best to not drop you on the ground and have it to where you can be able to see what's going on. We're just winding down on some small tasks that I already have parts for. And um, before I head off to work. And this truck is going to be, this truck has a lot of suspension issues that we have to go over. And it also um, has a lot of electrical and we're gonna do we're gonna fix up a couple of those right now um, because this truck has to go to my cousins to get those um, to get those fuel line adapters in the head changed and uh, that's my bad I should have just done it but I didn't know that that was a, a thing that should be done uh, and so paying the price a little bit um, I'm paying the price a little bit right now uh, but anyhow we're gonna get this we're gonna get this thing changed Gives me opportunity to clean a few things up while I got it out, and uh, it's always nice. Always nice to do a little cleanup. Yeah, see if you look at this valve, you can see it's uh it's in dire straits, and so these valves are pretty cheap, standard standard valves, and uh, we'll go and take take the uh, fitting out or the plug, put it in this side, put this fitting in and this fitting in. And get this valve ready to go, and I'll bring something to clean this stuff up with. Okay, so I cleaned this up best I could. It's in pretty rough shape. Uh, probably be able to get some new ones because it's just the valve company that has it. So, uh, but it's okay. We're gonna take the the valve. We're going to get it set in the hole. I'm going to clean the hole first. You know, you take the time to, to clean up a little bit right now, or you take the time to clean up a little bit later. Um, all right, so we get the valve put in. While you're doing it you may as well uh, you know make sure that the that the hosing the routing of the hose is going to be where you want it and uh, 
make any changes that you want to make. like that could do it this thing this is just a little a little uh, guard so that you don't inadvertently smack it around so we're gonna take this inside real quick clean it up a little bit maybe shoot it with a little bit of paint we'll be right back all right so what I just did was I painted up this thing it's got some crappy fasteners in it but We'll get some new fasteners with the new plastic rings so we can cover the buttons with with chrome knobs. We need to re we need to recover this stuff, but this will be this will be something that we'll do after the truck's all done and we're uh, we're confident all the electrical components and um, and then we're gonna start making it look pretty. We'll get this flooring out. We'll clean steam clean the whole floor. And the door panels and the roof and all that and then we'll start taking these out and uh, taking all the switches and stuff off and then we'll get these recovered and then put them back in but for now we're just gonna keep on keeping on that one slightly they don't really like the way it is yeah there you go we're gonna fix all the little air leaks and so we can Get these brakes to work. We want the brakes and parking brake to be good and we want it to be able to maintain air pressure. Um, so we'll find out any of the little leaks and then I'm going to, uh, I gotta check the air conditioning. Um, So there's there's a there's a series of valves, and um, I think I'm gonna come in through here. Um, I don't know is that the way I want to go, or do I want to just go over everything? Like go over this one? Yeah, I think that's the way it's gonna be. Uh, anyways, there's a there's a series of switches. I didn't think that the um, that a cooling fan, uh, an engine cooling fan solenoid, was a really uh, extravagant deal until I started looking at getting this one working. And uh, so there's three switches involved. There's a uh, there's an air conditioning pressure switch. There's a engine temperature switch. And then there's a, a fan solenoid. Now, the uh, they all depend on each other. So you've got normally open, normally closed, and uh, On the switches and the the solenoid. Now, what we want to do, I think, is I think we want the the fan solenoid to fail um, on. So if if something happens in the electrical system, you get a sensor bad or whatever, the fan comes on and stays on. Because wouldn't you be better off with the cooling fan on in an overheat situation than having the cooling fan off? I agree. So I think I want to have but the other problem is the the fan I have is um, 
it takes air pressure to turn it on. I would really like to have a fan that took air pressure to turn it off. Man, I really cooked these wires when I had that one touching ground. Hopefully it didn't burn up too much important shit. But anyhow, um, so my fan does not work that way. My fan, um, my fan is on with air. It should be off with air. That way, fail safe would be fan on. But anyhow, uh, so since my since my fan requires air to turn on, um, it really doesn't matter how I do the other things. So just forget I was even talking about that because I don't know where I was going with it. I should have tightened this one up before I put that other one on, but such is life. This is a lot harder than it should be. Just saying. All right. So, anyways, that's fixed. And uh, window switch is fixed. And. Uh, yeah, this should be up in here. this mess down here. It's a bunch of mess up in this panel. Alright. Well, I think we're going to Start working the old headliner down. All right. Probably get us a power screwdriver. 
because I'd be yelling at Johnny right now if he was using a hand screwdriver on this stuff. Let's see, what holds this on? Oh yeah, I'm gonna slide from side to side. Okay, so I'm gonna say this gets held on from the side. down on that mattress and is super wet from the rain last night. That seems like a long screw. Oh, so that's what the interior color is supposed to be. Wow, that's crazy. some cutters. I'll take my cutter back. I'll put these up there. Look at the difference. Wow. We're going to see if we can power wash this and if it'll come clean. That's unbelievable. And Johnny did a really good job on the back with the scrubbing bubbles. It did a nice job. I don't know if there's fix in the front one. We shall see, we shall see. Let me grab some cutters. Got a couple of miscellaneous panels. We're gonna cut this. Uh, right on the outside of these connectors. I got some of these lights actually from the, from the, uh, Winnebago project I used to used to have. So we may we may put some of those in, I don't know. Try and save all of those.
Ay, ay, ay. Ay, 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 ay. Okay. Now, something tells me this can be a little more complicated than what I got going right now. Otherwise, some stuff would already be going on, right? Yeah. Yeah. It seems like I might have to take a lot of this. Oh, is that a piece? Oh, man. Yeah, of course it folds down on the sides. I thought it just went up behind that, but nope, it is that. <sighs> Shucky darns for sure. Well, yep. So. Should be a spring on that. You split the low gears and then you just run the high gears that's weird What's the dealio? You got some dealio going on there. Uh-huh. Okay. Yep, we're gonna have to 
get after it. Quite the long screw there, bub. I'll have to take that whole back one off and then pull it down from the back and out from the front. Yeah. Sucks, but gotta be done. <laughs> Alright, so there's the color difference right there. And uh, we're just going to put some of this multi surface cleaner on it and just let it set. 
but this is a factory color and this is the 30 years of cigarette smoke color or however long you think this truck was in service let me get a brush long time long time Well, the good news is, it did kind of clean some of it. So that leads me to believe that we may, may be able to get <laughs> some of it clean. Look at it. That's so gross. We're gonna get, uh, Johnny did the back one with scrubbing bubbles in it, and it looks pretty good. Uh, so we're gonna get more scrubbing bubbles, and we're gonna see what scrubbing bubbles does for this piece. It'd be cool to get it lightened up to a, as close to factory color as possible. Now you say, why don't you just call a day cab company and yada yada blah blah. Well, I, I want to, but you know, it's like three or 4,000 bucks and I, I have to, I still have a bunch of trucks that need to get running and then painted and then interior you know so it's a long ways out before i get interior on anything and so i'll probably get this one as good as i can and reinstall it it already looks much better i mean it's a huge difference wait all right it was a two-man job we had to have johnny pull and bend while I beat it out from in there, but we got the we got the headliner out. Whoops! And I folded it right in half, like you shouldn't do. Yeah, it. Uh, this is supposed to be on there, so it won't fold in half. And I folded it in half anyways, because it come unglued. But we'll get it, we'll get it glued back together. And again, there's the contrast between the color interior is supposed to be and the color it is today. Pretty disgusting. Yeah. And that one piece of, uh, and that one piece of insulation. Okay, I see what you did with it there. Okay, so we got the door, or we got the back wall out, and we got the roof out. And we'll glue that insulation back up after we do these lights. But the, the bad news is, these lights, well, we'd be able to get to them. Looks like the bolts are right there. So we get these lights unbolted, get them off, get the new ones on, get them wired up, get them tested. And again, this is the lights that are coming off. We'll use one of these, whichever one the best one is. To replace the one that's off 12 and we'll get some new another set of these parts am lights for 12 i like them so this uh right here right here and uh surprisingly it actually does a pretty dang good job of cleaning now, that's what johnny used in the in the back and uh, uh, it's actually pretty impressive I don't remember who it was that suggested it in a past in the past video uh, I mean it obviously didn't take it back to white but difference is pretty amazing I 
just think if they would have used it uh, as regular cleaner, look at the difference. So we're gonna get more of it, we're gonna keep trying it, see if we can't get it to get that smoke damage off there. Look at the difference between the factory color and the smoke color and the post, the pre, the pre scrubbing bubbles and the post scrubbing bubbles. Isn't that crazy?